Hello everyone, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Andani and today the topic which I am going to discuss is functional shift of mandible which is also known as COCR discrepancy or centric occlusion centric relation discrepancy. Uh, I will try to explain this in a very simple way. Before going into the detail of the topic you should know what the centric occlusion is. Centric occlusion is the maximum intercuspation of upper and lower teeth when you bite when you close your jaw when you occlude your upper and lower teeth and you achieve maximum intercuspation between upper and lower teeth this position of the jaw is known as centric occlusion however centric relation is not dependent on the teeth it is the position which is determined totally by the muscles it, according to the uh, latest definition of centric relation, it is defined as the most relaxed position of the mandible when your condyle is in most superior and anterior position in the glenite fossa. Although the definition of centric relation has been changed a, a number of times in history, but according to the recent definition, your uh, condyle in centric relation, it is in the most superior and anterior position in the glenoid fossa with the avascular part of the articular disc interposed in between this art articular disc you can see that it is interposed between condyle and glenoid fossa this is centric relation position now let me explain further that for example if you are uh, sitting in a very relaxed mode your teeth are not in contact at that time that position of the jaw is actually centric relation position when your all the muscles are very relaxed and if you see the condyle in centric relation it will be in the most superior and anterior position in the fossa uh, suppose if the patient does not have any teeth edentulous patient they will definitely have disturbed centric occlusion but their centric relation will not be disturbed because centric relation does not depend on the teeth okay now this uh, person has achieved maximum intercuspation this is centric occlusion he is having maximum intercuspation is in this point at this point when he opens his mouth up to 20 millimeters his condyle will rotate his jaw will rotate there is no translation in centric relation there is no translation and normally there will be no discrepancy between centric occlusion and centric relation that means keeping the condyle in centric relation position patient can achieve maximum intercuspation like this his condyle is still in centric relation is still in the most superior and anterior position in the glenoid fossa but when you opens mouth more than 20 millimeters there will be some translation you can see there is translation of the jaw now the condyle is no more in centric relation so when you open your mouth um, more than 20 millimeters or even when you um, do lateral excursion of the jaw lateral movements of the jaw your condyle translates okay now if suppose if a patient has opened his mouth up to 20 millimeters from centric occlusion and he is trying to close his mouth now but because of some, some interferences in the occlusion like this he is unable to close his mouth in centric occlusion right now so what he is going to do he will translate his jaw either laterally or anterior posteriorly to achieve proper bite now this is his centric occlusion position which has been changed just because of the occlusal interferences that shows that centric occlusion depends on teeth if there is any interference and the patient is not able to close his mouth properly in 
centric occlusion, he will shift his jaw. That shifting can be in anterior posterior direction, sagittal plane, or it can be in transverse plane as well. So now you can see his condyle has also uh, translated and it is no more in centric relation. So you can call it centric occlusion, centric relation discrepancy now. If this translation is anterior posterior position, we call it pseudo class 3. So in other words, pseudo class 3 is an example of functional shift of mandible when because of the interference, occlusal interference, the jaw has moved forward, the jaw has protruded into class 3 position, we call it pseudo class 3. If we see the macro view of the same thing, in this patient, right now he has proper centric occlusion, his molars are in class 1, inside the relationship is ideal in class 1 and his condyle is in most superior anterior position that means there is no difference between centric occlusion and centric relation right now but when he opens his mouth and because of the in incisal interferences now if he tries to close his mouth he won't be able to close his mouth properly into centric occlusion so to bite properly he will have to protrude his jaw a bit forward and now look at the uh, molar relationship and canine relationship and inside the relationship. Now the patient is no more in class 1, he is in class 3, even skeletally as well as dentally. But this is not actually the true class 3 because skeletally he is still class 1. He is skeletally still class 1. But just to avoid these incisal interferences, he had to protrude his jaw and became class 3. If you don't treat the patient in his growing age, this can lead to permanent deformation as well. And he will be true skeletal class 3 afterwards. This function shift of jaw uh, is also found in anterior posterior position. Um, that means that mandible can move anterior posteriorly to avoid that interference and sometimes you can also find this movement in the lateral direction like this is the normal bite of the patient when he opens his mouth at this time uh, in this view his condyle must be in centric relation and when he closes uh, still the condyle is in centric relation so you can see say that uh, there is no discrepancy between centric occlusion and centric relation right now. But when he opens his mouth and uh, God forbid he has some um, problem with the posterior teeth like upper posterior teeth are lingually palatally inclined or he has narrow maxilla or a bit uh, other interferences. To avoid these interferences he won't be able to close his jaw. Now to achieve maximum intercuspation he will have to translate his jaw again in lateral direction so now you you can notice that the patient has a skeletal asymmetry he has shift in his midlines as well he must be having a cross bite on one side and buccal cross bite or normal bite on the other hand so if you uh, f find this kind of situation in these type of cases you have to examine the patient in centric relation so that you can identify where the interferences are and you can treat that patient properly. I hope this has uh, cleared your concept of uh, functional shift of the mandible and centric occlusion, centric relation discrepancies. Thank you.